Things set up as last week, uh, there was a fully connected neural network with uh, uh, five hidden layers, so 12, 10, 7, 5, 4, 3. Uh, they used a 12 dimensional binary uh, data set, which had uh, one bit of output. So it was a synthetic data set that they produced on uh, 12 dimensional uh, you know, space on a, like, on a sphere, and then they cut it out in some sort of smart way. And uh, their findings are pretty much summarized here. So if we look at these, these are, these are two different data sets and these are two different activation functions. So when they had a hyperbolic tangent, uh, what they saw that all of these layers were compressing the information. But as soon as they switched to using a rectified linear unit, which is just like a line, but then the negative values go to zero, um, there was no compression in the hidden layers. The last layer was still compressing because that is using a softmax, and softmax is what's called double saturated. So double saturation of the activation function means that it's bounded from both sides, kind of like that. So these regions, these asymptotic regions are called uh, desaturation regions, and ReLU is what's called a non-saturating activation function because this part over here on ReLU is, you know, it can go indefinitely. One question. Um, yeah. Wouldn't that be odd? Because sometimes the ReLU can also be zero. So you know you have definitely a loss of information. Yeah, yeah, you definitely do. So, so there, there must be at least some form of yeah. loss there. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's a very intuitive thought. I thought so too. Uh, so we'll see more of that next week. <laughs> um, there is a loss of information in relevant, but these functions are generally double unsaturating because they can go into an unsaturating regime where they just, you know, values are floating there. Um, and uh, these value, this is quite a clear picture that you know we don't see any compression, even though we are using um, similar architecture, same data, same everything. And this is the same. Um, this is a different experiment that they ran on uh, MNIST dataset uh, with a fully connected neural network uh, of this size here. It's quite big. Uh, and they used a, they didn't use bidding for that, they used a, so, um, a kernel density estimator that they want to go And uh, the, there was a uh, sort of a controversial part of uh, this experiment because when they were um, measuring mutual information with rail networks, they had to bin it as well, but then binning a uh, non-saturating activation function is trickier because when you want to bin uh, hyperbolic tangent, you just say, well, you know, for minus one to one, go bin space, 30 bins, there you go. It's always the same. But how do you bin a um, unbounded function? So their proposal was to, um, they trained the network first and they saw the largest single activation value throughout all the training and all the layers and then they took that and cut this space into a hundred different bins and said yes this is our binning procedure that's what you're using uh, and uh, that's how we solved the binning uh, and the results of that you know we just saw um, to go a bit further into uh, looking at the difference that the activation function has on the information in the neural network, uh, they created a very simple neural network with just um, three neurons, two weights, no, actually one weight. So it's a very um, simple model. And then uh, they describe their setup here. Measuring mutual information here is very simple. Uh, you, just, you just have these bins and you basically your hidden activity hidden value is just a single integer um, afloat and then you build that and you can easily see uh, what's the effect the binning has and the weights of uh, the magnitude of the weight have on the um, on your values and he kind of um, Sachs explains why we saw no compression in Drell before because for the hyperbolic tangent on the uh, non-linearity, 
as your weight starts to increase, then uh, it starts to shed inflammation. And that kind of makes sense, because if you're uh, having a large weight, then most of your values will end up in these saturating regions, and that's kind of basically doing a sort of yes or no decision. While if you have very large weights, uh, you will lose half of your data, and then the other half will be some, distributed somewhere over this uh, linear region of gravity. And there is no loss of information there as the weights start to increase. And, um, I think this was, uh, uh, they were passing like uh, Gaussian noise through this. Thing. So there wasn't any like trading done or anything, it was a very, very simple problem. But of course, Neural networks are larger, there's many weights that can uh, interact with one another and the hidden spaces are more difficult. <coughs> so this kind of gives a good intuition why we might not see compression uh, with ReLU, but it still doesn't prove all of it. Um, there's a good discussion on the importance of the noise in the data set and we'll talk about it later because it's actually quite a crucial aspect. So the second experiment was that they created a neural network without any activation function. So that uh, deep linear neural network, um, I think it's uh, for Andrew Sachs, it's uh, a field that he did quite a lot of research in, so um, he was able to conduct some very um, high quality um, experiments. And basically the setup here was that there was a teacher network and a student network, and the student network was trying to learn the behavior of the teacher. So the teacher was, um, looks like that. It had a weight and it had an input and there was um, another approximation error. Um, noise slapped onto that and then they were passing Gaussian noise into that uh, teacher. And that was the, the generator for the training data that the student had to learn. And then the student is just this network here is just a series of weights applied to the input because there's no activation function, it's just a linear transformation. And uh, the benefit of using linear networks is that it's much easier to um, calculate mutual information because <laughs> with like in Grello, there's no loss of information because you just get the same thing and you can make a noise assumption and then just calculate uh, your mutual information analytically. You don't need to have binning or any of this sort of tricky mutual information stuff. Isn't that also a bit odd that they claim that by just blowing it up on one side, you essentially win more information than you lose by cutting half of the signal away? That seems you win more information. Well, the, by the ReLU, uh, by the ReLU is not compressing. So, so their argument essentially is by, by increasing the activation energy, I, I uh, expand my my fine distribution to something a little wider. That increases the information. Yeah. And that increases more than I lose on the other side by completely ignoring that signal. Yeah. But isn't that odd? Isn't that odd that I create information out of nothing while, while definitely losing half my signal by just cutting it out. That, that seems but like they're using binning, so the binning is yeah. also part of that because if you have very small weights, you will have a lot of injection to yeah. 